ဟုတ်ကဲ့အာလုံးမိမင်္ဂလာပါရှင်လေဆရာပါတော့ပရော်ဖက်ဆာစီယာဒီဆရာမာကြီးများကွန်စာတမ်းများနှင့်ကျော
sarcopenia should really be treated. And how would you diagnose this? Very easy. In this country, you can diagnose. You just need the awareness and you just need to realize the role of importance of amino living powder or infusion in the management of the sarcopenia. That is very important for us to impart the knowledge to the audience. So together with another guidance of Professor Cho Sutton, Yang Liver Foundation Myanmar has been conducting all the educational activities for the public as well as for the uh, medical professionals. And we never stopped, even during the COVID uh, outbreak, we never stopped. Our symposium, uh, we have participation speakers from the uh, US, like uh, Professor Arun Sanyal during our meeting on the on the Nefeldi and uh, Professor P.S. Chow and from India, many professors also participated. So the aim of the, the vision of the Nemaja and Liberal Society is we will give whatever we can to the audience in, in terms of the health education knowledge, especially things are changing because three years back in one of the, three or four years back, one of the CME program, one of the consultants participating in our symposium, he said protein is very dangerous for the hepatic encephalopathy. Protein restriction should be uh, strictly followed or something like that. In fact, our society, our foundation, four or five years back, we have a hep guideline for the cirrhosis of the liver in Mie. Even during that, we have clearly indicated and shown to the public that the public mean to the audience of the medical profession that protein restriction is not necessary anymore. Protein restriction for the treatment of encephalopathy or cirrhosis of liver will have adverse effects. It will make the situation worse. But we have, uh, we have been, since our medical school days, we've been hammered and uh, imprinted our brain that protein is very dangerous in encephalopathy. You must restrict the protein. No, that is completely wrong. All the proteins are very good and, and uh, it is necessary for the recovery and of such, uh, this is one example. So we try to impart new knowledge that we have learned in the international meeting. Uh, and uh, we try to provide up-to-date guidelines. We are in the midst of the uh, producing heptocellular carcinoma guideline hepatitis B and C treatment guideline, and fatty liver, the guideline. Fatty liver, if you have attended our meeting a month ago, the new nomenclature of the fatty liver is com completely changed. The Americans have changed the name Mesali and Mesh, not Mefeldi, not Mefeldi. I still remember we have a meeting uh, Arun Sanyal was participating in the U.S. Professor Josuru asked uh, Arun Sanyal, so what do you think the term Mephali will be adopted? He said, no, not Mephali. We This will never become come into existence. Obviously enough, the Americans chopped Asian, ASEAN, uh, Upper South people chopped into pieces. And no, your mephali is wrong. You don't, you don't follow the principle. You don't know what is the outcome. You don't know the pathogenesis. And mephali means fatty liver. Means you still have a 
uh, stigmatism. No, our American and the European and the Latin America terms Mefeldi, Meseldi, and the uh, Mesh and the uh, SLD, steatotic liver disease, is the correct one. So our GN Liver Foundation supported the new nomenclature and they have recognized our support. So tonight, this evening, we are going to hear different aspects of the cirrhosis by different very educated, very eminent lecturers. And we thank Osuka, a minor living company, for supporting such uh, a very useful educational program without any limitation. And for that, we, on behalf of the GN Liver Foundation, I would like to say a big thank you. And please support in future as well, maybe every six months or something like that. That will be very useful. We are not... We do not want to participate in a drug launching program, something the company would like to support their product and something. No, this is purely academic, highly academic symposium, and we are very much appreciated. And I had a fall in who get and I had a fracture of the femur and gradually recovering. I still need somebody when I go down step and my assistant will be, I expect them to be near here so that I can go down. <laughs> and, uh, and on the beach, I had a fall and the, that uh, fibula bone was fractured. Okay. Uh, as we grow old, we can talk a lot. Uh, please, uh, thank you very much for bearing my long talk, because the more the more the the the, the more you become older, the more you the more talk, 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 talk. Anyway, thank you very much. Good evening, Siai, all the professors and all my colleagues. First, I would like to thank uh, Oscar, <clears throat> Mr. Montana, for sponsoring this uh, lovely educational symposium. As Siai has said, uh, this is a, what do you call, a very important topic, and this is the most threatening and dreaded complications of the liver disease. So that's why our GI Liver Foundation is trying to minimize these liver cirrhosis by <clears throat> doing screening, vaccination, preventing hepatitis B, and reducing alcohol and fatty liver diseases and HCC. So the topics are very nice. And I don't think I will have to introduce uh, you to the speakers. All the eminent speakers are well known and then you have heard from them uh, quite frequently and I hope you will enjoy the symposium. <clears throat> First, I would like to give you a few updates of our foundation. Uh, recently, last month on the 25th of uh, October, uh, we have done a screening and vaccination to more than 100 and 1,100 uh, monks and the nuns and Nipito. We have successfully done it in collaborating with the Ministry of Religious Affairs and Ministry of Health. And we are trying to do, to expand that program to 
uh, to a hundred thousand of monks. Ratangado apart the thing. Sese bira. People say to people, hepatitis B vaccination to nine general choose anybody. And everybody is welcome to, to participate in this program also. And another educational program, up and coming educational program will be on the June of 2024, and tentatively, we are going to have a Myanmar Net Symposium with the, with the international speakers also. And in December 2024, we are going to have a truly international meeting with, with the, all the pathologists from West and also from this Southeast Asia. And I would like to remind you that on the 16th December, we are going to have a MGLF, and that is our fifth anniversary dinner at uh, Wyndham. And I would like to invite you all when it is near. The aim of our foundation is to eliminate hepatitis. And this year, we pledge to eliminate viral hepatitis. And the reasons of this spreading hepatology to the primary care physicians, and then bringing hepatitis care closer to communities through this primary physician is that we want to avoid or we want to minimize our patients from having this dreaded complications of the end stage liver, the cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is not a joke. Uh, I remember one of my patients, he's an alcoholic and he had a decompensated cirrhosis. So I told him that he needs to stop alcohol or otherwise his days are very limited and numbered. He paused for a, a while and then he asked me, can I ask you a question? Okay, shoot. Then he said, okay, if I can stay for very long, then what if I enjoy alcohol for my last days? Yes, I said, you can enjoy it. It's up to you. It's your life. It's you and, the, and, and he's a family man. And it's you and your family who's made to make a decision whether you continue or stop drinking. But, <clears throat> but mind you, our liver disease patients, we are not like cardiac patients. Cardiac patients while doing or while walking or staying and suddenly they had a heart attack and then it's over. They don't suffer that much. But for, a, for our liver patients, once you have cirrhosis, you will have these bleeding. And this is what you call the side of your own blood is very, <clears throat> what you call, uh, unsighted, unsighted, unsightful. And then you will have the societies and the edema and the encephalopathy. And then with this, what you call uh, this, uh, <clears throat> when this, what you call it is a sarcopenia, your frailty, and then you have this fatigue and frailty and this sarcopenia. Uh, and that is not a joke. So the last days of our liver patients are a very, what you call, uh, it's a very bad and very, it's not a, a good experience. They had to suffer about one to two years before they pass away. So that's why we want to minimize as much as possible for our patients to get into cirrhosis. That's why we are treating hepatitis B, preventing hepatitis B, treating hepatitis B early, hepatitis C early, treating alcoholic liver disease, fatty liver, and every liver patients, we're trying to treat it very early. With a handful of hepatologists in our country, we can do it ourselves. So we, are, we have to count on, on, we have to rely on our comrades, the primary care physicians to take part in the management of the hepatitis patients so that they can avoid having cirrhosis. 
And I would like to thank again Osuka for bringing in Amino 11, which is a, a very useful one to prevent and in the management of cirrhosis by combating this sarcopenia and frailty. With that, I would like to thank again all the, all the attending you know, primary care physicians in person and those attending on air in Mendeley also. And I would like to request MC to cover the following sessions for us. Thank you very much. Good evening, CIE and all my senior engineer colleagues. Uh, today, I will talk about the etiology of cirrhosis of the <clears throat> uh, liver cirrhosis is a uh, development of the hepatic fibrosis and regenerated nodules as a result of chronic liver injury leading to the portal hypertension and end stage liver disease. Uh, according to the classification, uh, cirrhosis is classified in two main uh, stage, compensated and decompensated. Depending on the present absence of clinically having decompensated cirrhosis, uh, especially ascites, viral hepatitis, and acrobatic and ischy. In compensated cirrhosis, they have the mild blood hepatitis, and clinical significant blood hepatitis, no viruses, this is a compensated. The common cirrhosis means the this patient have the various hemorrhage, ascites, and ischy. Late stage uh, decomposing is a uh, recurrent. Uh, they present as a recurrent various hemorrhage and also uh, repeated admission to the hospital for refractory ascites, hypernatremia, hyperurinary syndrome, recurrent ischy, and also uh, they. They, they have their many comorbidities in the hospital. And then, <clears throat> this patient is presenting approximately 50 to 60% of the patient with competitive cirrhosis level without uh, gastroesophagitis. Patient with uh, gastroesophagitis, by definition, uh, this patient, because patient with the uh, gastroesophagitis have a uh, pressure about uh, 10 more than 10 millimeter mercury. According to anatomically, uh, cirrhosis means a uh, diffuse process with fibrosis and nodule formation resulting uh, and, and, and then communication to the hepatocellular carcinoma. Histologically, uh, cirrhotic patients have a loss of normal hepatic architecture with bridging fibrosis and nodular regeneration. Prevalence. Prevalence cirrhosis. Uh, so it's an important cause of morbidity and mortality, and also cause of the death in worldwide. Approximately 2.4% of global death in 2019. In the Global Burden Disease Study, 2007, we showed that estimated number of people with a competitive cirrhosis was uh, 112 million worldwide, corresponding to the age standardized global burden of Compensated cirrhosis of 1,300 cases per 100,000 population. Etiologies. Most common causes are hepatitis B, C, alcoholic liver disease, and nephrotic. Others are autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, secondary biliary cirrhosis, primary scalones, polangitis, hemochromatitis, and Wilson disease. And also other congenital 
disease, alcohol and nutrient deficiency, and glycosylate disease, and also dry, and next one is a dry induced liver disease, and also uh venous atherosclerosis can cause uh surgery of liver. And one of the cardiac cause of the cirrhosis is the dry city heart failure, and also triglyceride to catch uh, globally, um, among the patients with the cirrhosis, 42% have B infection and 21% had the C infection. According to the ratio uh, data and also the ratio reading, the prevalence of B infection uh, in among the patients with the cirrhosis were highest in the Western Pacific region, 59%, and lowest in the Americas, 5%. Highest prevalence of C infection among the patients with cirrhosis uh, was in the Eastern Mediterranean region, 70%, and the lowest was Africa and Western Pacific, about 13%. According to the data of the uh, patient with cirrhosis and heavy drink alcohol use were high in the Euro, 16 to 78%, and America, 70 to 52%, and was generally lower in Asia, 0 to 41%. Another one is the prevalence of nephrity in serial patients estimated from the 2% in South Korea and Brazil to 80% in Canada. Now, this is a etiology of cirrhosis from the 1993 to 2021. This is a, a global pattern of the disease of cirrhosis of liver. Etiology of cirrhosis in America is shifting from the active B and C infection towards the result or treated by hepatitis, alcohol consumption, and nephrit. This is a changing trend. A study, one of the studies in the Western Pacific region showed that the nephrit associated alcohol associated cirrhosis were increasing in this region, but viral hepatitis remains a dominant cause of cirrhosis. This slide shows the mortality of cirrhosis due to different etiologies. Number of deaths associated with cirrhosis with different etiologies range from the um, more than um, more than one lead or uh, death of nephrite associated cirrhosis, nearly uh, three lead or four C associated cirrhosis or liver. According to the data, uh, corresponding estimate of the ASDR ranging from the 1.7 death bar. 100,000 population for nephrite associated cirrhosis to 4.8 death by 100,000 population for C associated cirrhosis. So these these show that the uh, cirrhosis this um, so many complication and then mortality is very high among this species. The number of TBD study 2017 provided insight into the tumor trend in tests associated with cirrhosis. Between the 2012 and 2017 data, the number of deaths associated with cirrhosis increased by 9%, although the global ESGR cirrhosis declined from the 70.1% to 16.5 deaths by 100,000 population. B association, uh, B association with ESGR from the hepatitis B associated cirrhosis, C associated cirrhosis, and acro associated cirrhosis also decreased by 1.4%. 0.5% and 0.4% respectively between the age uh, within the in year of 2012 and 2017 data. My contest the ASDR for nephrite associated cirrhosis increased by 0.5% over the same period. Uh, but the uh, cardiovascular disease are the leading cause of death many patients with nephrite and also uh, they, they, they have the many disability approach to control this condition. These are the top 10 causes of death in Myanmar for, for both sex, age, or group. Cirrhosis of liver is the number seven cause of death in Myanmar. Number one is the stroke. One of, uh, one of the most important one of the cirrhosis of liver is the be infection. B infection has significant public health problem and it affected in 250 million people who are chronically infected. 
annually more than 600,000 times from the complication of the B infection. Approximately 75% of the people with the B infection reside in Asia, but uh, in the Pacific Islands, South Sahara, Africa, and Mizum Basin and Eastern Europe. B infection is a major cause of the cirrhosis and also anti liver disease, and it responds for more than half of the cases of HCC is caused by the hepatitis B infection worldwide. These are the complication and organ of B infection uh, from the chronic infection uh, to the chronic hepatitis B infection, complicated cirrhosis, decomposed cirrhosis, cirrhosis of liver, and also have the cellular carcinoma and death. And a simply five year progression rate from the B uh, hepatitis to cirrhosis is between the 12 and 20 uh, percent. And your rate of progression of chronic hepatitis to cirrhosis estimated to be 2% to 5% for E antigen positive and 3% to 10% for E antigen negative patient. Higher rate in E antigen negative patient is related to the older age and more advanced liver disease at presentation. Um, many factors are involved in the uh, hepatitis B infection. Uh, further, that have been reported to associate with the increased risk of progression of the cirrhosis include host, older age, male, obesity, uh, persons with high level of B infection, and genotype. Genotype is uh, more complicated than the genotype B, and co infection with the other viral infection, hepatitis C, HIV, and also in one of factors, alcohol conception, and also fatty liver disease. What it be in Myanmar, according to the 2015 national prevalence data showed that uh, B7 energy positive is 6.5%. Prevalence is a uh, male and female population uh, was found to be 9% and 5.5% respectively. Uh, geographically, highest prevalence in Yangon, Pateng, and Molam Yai, 12.3, 9.2, and 7.8% respectively. The prevalence of B infection in general population was 6.5% to 8.95% in male and 5.47% in female. Highest prevalence rate was seen in Yangon, about 12.29%. Another one of the causes of cirrhosis is the hepatitis C infection. Uh, this infection following the acute infection to the chronic infection, most of the patients have the 50 to 80 percent of the patients develop chronic C infection. Chronic C infection uh, progress to the chronic inflammatory disease and then to the fibrosis, cirrhosis, hepatocellular, and death. Uh, globally, C infection uh, is about 58 million people are infected and 1.5 million new infection occurs by year. It is the ratio of 2019 data. Uh, estimately, 3.2% of million adolescents and children were chronic hepatitis C infection. Approximately nearly uh, 400,000 deaths annually, uh, mainly from the cirrhosis and hepatitis cellular carcinoma. Prevent of C infection in Myanmar, according to the uh, 2015 survey data prevalence is 2.6%. Uh, HCV infection account for the 25% of the hepatocellular carcinoma in Myanmar, 2016 data. Another one is the uh, National Hepatitis Control Program, uh, 2017 and 2020. This data from the our hospital. Yango Specialty Hospital, Five Repetit Hospital. This shows that the uh, age breakdown in total is 1,318 patients. Uh, most of our patients have age uh, between the 45 to 59 years. Patient is characteristic from the male and, uh, male and female uh, gender, uh, male 38%. Female is sixty-two percent. Uh, and this patient, surgery patient, is thirty-one percent, and non-surgery patient was sixty-nine percent. So, uh, surgery patient are uh, most of our 
male patient. Another one of the uh, causes of serious liver alcohol, alcohol uh, association with the uh, alcoholic steatosis, alcoholic hepatitis with cirrhosis. Uh, these are several factors that are involved in the damage of the liver, uh, such as the pattern of alcohol consumption, cells, diet, so, uh, obesity, genetic background, and appearance of the influence in development of ill liver disease in heavy alcohol drinkers. Approximately 15-20% of patients will progress to the cirrhosis their lifetime. The recent study showed that the 82% uh, of the patients present the clinical diagnosis of alcoholic hepatitis and biopsy proven alcoholic hepatitis also have the histological feature of bridging fibrosis and cirrhosis. Uh, these are the similar changes other causes of cirrhosis. Patients may have the stigma of chronic liver disease or physical examination, also have the uh, other comorbidity. Abstinence from the alcohol is essential to treatment, and this is um, uh, one of the treatment of the alcoholic induced liver injury. According to the uh, data from the junior 2017 data, I the single leading cause of mortality by cells in 2017 and mortality due to the alcoholic liver disease in May is 2.8% of all mortality. Female was 2.91%. Another one is a uh, uh, nephrity. Now, metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. The present uh, prevalence of this uh, disease worldwide in parallel with the increase in prevalence of obesity and metabolic comorbid disease, like oh, 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 this, 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 this lipidemia, central obesity, and hypertension. Global prevalence uh, during the two, uh, 1990 to 2019 was approximately 30 uh, percent. With the trend analysis revealing that 37 percent of the world may have the nephrology as of 2019. Project rising in nephrology prevalence by 2030, uh, patient with the advanced hepatic fibrosis defined by the bridging fibrosis F3 or compensated cirrhosis F4 will increase disproportionately during the protein doubling of NASH. So this is the most important one of the causes of cirrhosis and HCC. Uh, the incidence of the hepatitis compensating HCC and dead related to the NASH cirrhosis are uh, likely, likewise expected to increase two to three, four by 2030. Although expected to increase further, NASH related cirrhosis is already the leading cause of uh, cirrhosis of liver and also uh, liver HCC. And this is uh, one of the indications for liver transplantation in women and also those more than 65 years of age. This is a complication of the uh, nephrology. Another one is a uh, cirrhosis due to autoimmune liver disease. I mean, liver disease and uh, primary bilirubin cirrhosis, primary erosion coronary they cause the also cirrhosis and then change to the HCC. This characterized by immune mediated injury to the hepatocyte and binders. Hepatocyte injury is predominant feature in autoimmune hepatitis. Ability injury and hormonal bilirubin cirrhosis is the uh, intrahepatic binder injury. And also, primary sclerosing cholangitis or immunoglobulin, IgG4 mediated cholangitis. Some of our patients have the overlap or variant syndrome. They, this also indicate the presence of liver injury and also cause cirrhosis. Uh, autoimmune hepatitis are uh, mostly in the women, about 3.6 into 1 ratio. A same country like Norway and Sweden, uh, yearly incident 1 to 2 
and 11 to 17 by 100,000 individuals respectively. Uh, Israel reported that uh, prevalence of AIH 15 to 25 cases by 100,000 individuals in zero. Uh, AIH should be considered in the any patient way acute or chronic liver disease, particularly in the corners of high bar gamma globulin anemia. Uh, pro and timely diagnosis is crucial as untreated AIH has a high mortality rate. Uh, one third of the adult and half of the patient with a time patient with AIH have cirrhosis at presentation. So this is also the uh, nearly common cause of the cirrhosis in Myanmar. Primary bilirubin primary cirrhosis is uh, um, not very common in Myanmar. And uh, this is another one of the autoimmune disease, and it resulting in the chronic cholestasis, uh, or they have inflammation and fibrosis. Uh, this is predominantly seen in the women than the men, about 10 to 1 ratio, and prevalence of 1 in 1,000 women over the age of 40 years. Uh, this is uh, changes of the normal level. Uh, to the inflammation, chronic cholestasis, inflammation, fibrosis, and also uh, the cause of cirrhosis and HCC. Both of the, our etiology, etiology on cirrhosis in Myanmar, the same as the uh, world, right? Then the whole, most of our patients have the hepatitis B, C, alcoholic. Uh, this is uh, another one is uh, this. Uh, uh, YSH data from 2020 to 2022, total admission 1,448. The, among these patients, complications of cirrhosis, people are 521, about 35.9%. Uh, uh, 26% are female and 74% male patients. And this shows the Commonest cause of the cirrhosis of lima in YSH data, ECORA, BC, and BNC co infection, B, hepatitis uh, B, positive patient with alcoholic cirrhosis, C, positive patient with alcoholic cirrhosis, NAMI, NAMI cirrhosis, about 46 people, and uh, other causes. And uh, with them, this is a very few patients, four patients. So, total uh, 521 patients. Well, most common cause is uh, alcoholic cirrhosis of liver. This is alcoholic liver disease. Mm -hmm. YSH data. Now, uh, C, so this cirrhosis is the second one. And third one is uh, B, positive cirrhosis of liver. Uh, this is uh, our own uh, YSH data. Uh, Many alcoholic cirrhosis of liver. Previously, I told female 1%, male 99%. B positive cirrhosis of people, uh, most of the, our patients are male and uh, female 20%. C positive, male 48%, female 52%. Summary Cirrhosis is an important cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide, and owing to the rising prevalence of obesity and increased alcohol consumption, the improvement of the management and also the Improvement of the BNC infection and the epidemiology of the bladder and cirrhosis are changing. All right. Uh, so, BNC also, uh, infection are still public health problem in Myanmar. Increased the insulin um, mortality and also cardiovascular morbidity should also be given in mind. So, uh, our patient of the patients patient are most common, uh, seven most common causes of. Cirrhosis in Myanmar. Uh, these are our my reference. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. DOG of cirrhosis of liver in Myanmar, Jang Pyo Chapi Bado, Professor Dongwin Sui A, Jesu Tubin De Shi Bai Shin, Salabi, Season Li Ya. Natural History and Consequences of Cirrhosis of Liver, Jang Pyo Chapi Bai Shin, Professor Dota Natron A, Giza Swa Panja Bai Shin.
Good evening. Thank you very much, Siyagi, and organizing committee and pharmaceutical company, all audience, and uh, thanks to everyone who deserve to be thanks. Uh, my topic is uh, natural history and consequences of cirrhosis of liver. Etym according etymology, this cirrhosis derived from the Greek word, color word, since 1819, and from Kiros, and then it means a yellowish tawny and yellowish color of the disease of the liver. And cirrhosis was described in 1685 by John Brown, uh, who is the English anatomist, surgeon, and described as the liver appearing glandulous. So as you all know, cirrhosis is a major cause of the morbidity and mortality, and it, it counts for 2.4% of the global deaths. The cirrhosis of liver is a progressive and dynamic cause. It transitioned from relatively stable, compensated asymptomatic cirrhosis to the advanced stage of the decompensated cirrhosis. Since the, uh, the rate of the 5% to 7% per year, since the, this transition and impact on the median survival, because uh, compensated cirrhosis after 12 years survival, and it's down to the two years, about the two years survival in the decompensated cirrhosis. So in this transition of the compensated to decompensated cirrhosis, the portal hypertension is the primary driver. He is a leading actor of the and the decompensation and then causing the complication. So actually cirrhosis is not just a severe fibrosis. In cirrhosis, there is an alteration in the hepatic vasculature. It is a crucial component. Because of this uh, alteration in vascular uh, hepatic vasculature, it causes the resistance in portal venous systems and then causing the pressure gradient. So uh, cirrhosis of liver, vascular changes is a crucial and pivotal role. So portal hypertension, because of the cirrhosis of liver and portal hy hypertension, the consequences and will be will happen. So uh, the mechanism of the, the development of the portal hypertension, there's the vascular changes as I have the presented. The key leading actors are the hepatic stellar cells and sinusoidal endothelial cells. So these cells are um, a leading actor in, in pathogenesis of the portal hypertension. So you can see he, here are the hepatocytes and then the, the sinusoids and the space of disease in the cellular cells. And since uh, the, any injury or insult, there is a hepatic cell cells are activated and leads to the, the production of the filaments are causing the extracellular matrix formation. It's called the fibrogenesis and uh, liver sinusoidal uh, cells and it undergo the phenotypic remodeling and causing the capillarizations and it leads to the hepatic resistance. So you, you recall your memory, uh, uh, this is a normal liver, so hepatocytes is very beautiful and then the uh, hepatic uh, stellic cells are very queen sense and the, he does a hepatic uh, sinusoid and then if, uh, these are the uh, fenestry. Since any form of the liver injury, the Queensland is hepatic cell cells is activated and production of the uh, the microfilaments, uh, the filaments, myofibroblasts, and then the deposition of the extracellular matrix, it is a main bivalent role causing the scar tissues. And then, so you can see in the endothelium, the loss of the fenestries and the deformity in the, the hepatic sinusoids are deformed and causing the vascular resistance. So hepatic fibrosis accumulation extracellular matrix, and then the first it is a wound healing normal physiology, but later stage is replaced by the scar tissue, and then the hepatic lobules are distorted. Um, the, there is a consequence of the vascular changes in the 
and the cirrhosis, this is the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. In hepatic cirrhosis, because of the architecture changes and the lobule formation replaced by the no juice, so a vascular occlusion happened. And in meanwhile, there is a endothelial dysfunction and increase of vascular tone. It leads to the increased hepatic uh, resistance. And then because of the angiogenesis in this stage, there is an increased port of flow. And so in this stage, there is a the reverse of raw blood flow will happen. And then finally, formation of the alternative blood flow channels. So these are the culprit, uh, uh, the pathophysiology of the varices I will mention in the later slides. So uh, increased intrahepatic resistance and port of flow, it leads to the port of hypertension because of the intrahepatic uh, with constriction resistant in the and uh, can lead to the splenic vasodilatation, especially in the in the, the the effect on the renal on the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver because of the peripheral uh, vasodilatation splenic vasodilatation it caused the effective hypovolemia even in the normal euvolemic or hypervolemic effective hypovolemia leads to the order uh, Activation of the uh, vasoconstrictor substance like a uh, renal angiotensin aldosterone system, sympathetic nervous system. So, in the inner world, because of the increased port of flow, it is an uh, increased back pressure and collateral formations. So, increased port of inflow and increased port of pressure, and it finally it leads to the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. So uh, compensated cirrhosis and previous speaker uh, already mentioned in in the uh, there is a no side is no varices. If the patient is in the decompensated state, what will happen? High hemodynamic abnormality and hypovolemia. So bottle hepatic pressure increase resistant uh, hepatic vascular resistant and increase bottle inflow. Uh, finally, it's systemic vasodilatation uh, and reduction of the mean, mean arterial pressure. Overall stage is a high hemodynamic disturbance. So in this stage, call hyperdynamic circulatory syndromes. In addition, there is a pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines that play in the pathogenesis of discompensated cirrhosis of the liver. In this stage, cirrhosis has uh, the complex uh, cirrhotic associated immune dysfunction. It involves uh, both innate and acquired immunity, susceptibility to bacterial infection, and increasing circulating pro inflammatory cytokines, chemokines. And then, in addition, this the, the gut micro alteration and then increase uh, in the senior permeability, causing the susceptibility to the infection and this systemic inflammation it, and both precipitate and perpetuate and worsening of the, the portal hypertension and is a further downstream of the complication. So finally, development of the complication of the organ failure in the, the cirrhosis of the liver. So this... Uh, um, algorithm, you can see the uh, cirrhosis and portal hypertension, and then the bacterial translocation because of the increased permeability and bacterial translocation get a dysbiosis. So these factors and and the causing the the pathogen because of the infection pathogen associated molecular pattern we call it pumps. So because of the bacterial translocation and the microbial changes, and in liver injury, it uh, reduced the dumps, damage associated uh, molecular patterns from the, the uh, hepatocytes and apoptosis. These factors activate the innate uh, pattern of the recognition receptors. Meanwhile, there is a release of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and their reactive oxygen species and the nitrogen species. Finally, it cause the splenic arteriola vasodilatation and the finally this the organ failure circulatory dysfunction and the de development of the multi organ dysfunction and the failure so for example salt and water retention renal angiotensin aldosterone system it leads to the the ascites formation and then the hepatorenal syndrome and hemodynamic abnormalities and the cardiovascular responsive 
constrictive vasoconstrictive stimulants lead to the uh, serotic cardiomyopathy, and then the microbial alterations and intestinal permeable lead to the spontaneous bacteria peritonitis. So a uh, management of decomposite cirrhosis, uh, I, can, I will touch just uh, over her and just generally, uh, management of the decomposite cirrhosis and then address the two approaches. First approach is the suppression of the etiologic factors that causing the liver inflammation and development of the cirrhosis. It is the main approach. And then sec second approach in the by understanding of the pathogenesis of the cirrhosis and decomposition and progression, we have to stop to target the these key uh, factors to prevent the further decomposition. So uh, to prevent the cirrhosis progression, uh, to prevent the further decomposition uh, rather than, and in, we have to preserve the integrity of the, the liver architecture, suppress the inflammation, uh, fibrosis regression, and reserve the, preserve the portal arterial circulation, normalization, and this, finally normalization of the cell numbers as well as the function. So is there a possible to fibrosis resolution, cirrhosis resolution? Is early detection and early treatment and patient's capacity to regenerate it? There is a fibrosis progression as well as a fibrosis resolution because um, then the, after treating the, the culprit uh, agent or, and the causative uh, etiology, and then uh, apoptosis, it induces apoptosis of the hepatic stellar cells and leads to the reduction of the number of the hepatic stellar cells and a reduction of the number of the collagen spine collagenase. And finally, metalloproteinase and the breakdown of the extracellular matrix formation. And so these factors and causing the fibrosis regression. So, uh, if patient is a decomposited, are the, what are the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver? So it's very severe bleeding. And as I've mentioned previous slides, very, because of the vascular changes in cirrhosis, and then due to the increased hepatic resistance and then increased port of flow. So it's formation because of backward pressures and the formation of the alternate uh, blood flow channels between the systemic and portal circulation. And then it formation finally leads to the formation of the varices. Uh, well, actual portal pressure, we can measure the hepatic venous pressure gradient is surrogate marker of the actual portal pressure and portal hypertension. Portal and normally, the hepatic venous pressure gradients are less than five. The more than five millimeter mercury portal hypertension is defined, and then clinically significant portal hypertension is a more than ten millimeter mercury. If patient is a more than twenty, the patient should be considered for early tips. So, uh, these are the the hepatic. Uh, <laughs> venous pressure gradient and event and the pre. Uh, because of the clinically significant border hypertension more than 10 and then early tips and should be considered the more than 20. There is a uh, the high hepatic venous pressure gradients. If we can measure, there is a we can detect the is there any chance of the rebleeding. So this is the algorithm of the acute GI bleeding and border hypertension. Uh, we can go further and uh, deeper and I think uh, the management uh, speaker will be talk on the, this management detail. Another uh, consequence of the cirrhosis of liver is uh, ascites formation. So ascites is most common complication of the cirrhosis of the liver. So uh, due to the, these uh, vascular changes in the back floor, accumulation of vasodilator substance results in the visconstriction, peripheral vasodilatation, in, and um, finally hypoperfusion even in the then the euvolemic or uh, hypervolemic. And so in this stage, uh, as previously I've mentioned in the renal angiotensin, aldosterone system activation and sympathetic nervous system in, and system activation and leads to the sort of water retention. So cause the increased hydrostatic pressure. Meanwhile, there is a liver can synthesize the albumin, not enough, and then the hypoalbuminemia and then causing the low unconscious pressure. And then the because of the vascular permeability, increase the filtration of the 
mesenteric vessels. So these called weeping in the, the accumulation of the fluid in the peritoneum. Actually, a peritoneum, the lymphatic uh, resorptive capacity, it's they counteract the early stage, but late stage and and indigenous the gut micro uh, uh, microbial alteration and in permeability, this inflammation and infection, and the uh, causing the peritoneal um, it's in impede the peritoneal resorption and they can counteract the finally it leads to the uh, acidic fluid uh, collection in the peritoneum. So we can forget uh, in the acidic form uh, ascites in the cirrhosis of liver, there is a serum ascites albumin gradient. It is a, a more than 1.1 gram per deciliter, has a 97% sensitivity, and it associated with the portal hypertension related ascites. So uh, the, in the blood serum albumin and then acidic albumin is substruction. So uh, regarding the treatment, salt restriction and the diuretics, and these are the main uh, management of the CIDs. And then uh, the salt re restriction is, is uh, important in the every stages of the CIDs. So refractory ascites, um, actually, uh, uh, diuretics, uh, we can't uh, achieve as we can't escalate the diuretic doses because uh, rarely uh, reach because of the side effect and then diuretic intractable ascites, especially in the Asian people, because of the they have this higher incidence of sarcopenia and poor muscle reserves, so they can tolerate the high dose of the diuretics. As in this condition, large volume paracentesis um, should be performed, and along with the albumin infusion to prevent the paracentesis induced circulatory dysfunction. And hepatic hydrothorax, actually hepatic hydrothorax is uh, like a uh, acidic uh, ascites because uh, the diaphragm, they have uh, the defect in the uh, diaphragm because the inspiration, there is a negative pressure in the thorax and then the, they draw the, the, the fluid from the ascites to the um, pleuric cavity. So causing the hepatic hydrothorax. And so uh, the resendesis means a uh, uh, aspiration can be done. And then finally, if uh, intractable, the hepatic hydrothorax a liver transplantation is indicated. So uh, we go to the hepatopulmonary syndrome. The basic principle is that the vascular, the intrapulmonary uh, vascular dilatations, and then the, and because of the angiogenesis, pul pul um, pulmonary capillary, because of endothelial cells and proliferation, angiogenesis, and hepatopulmonary syndrome, because it's contributed to the uh, vasodilatation. So so it caused the hepatopulmonary syndrome, the oxygen, in, the oxidemia and the platemia, dyspnea, they are these are the symptoms of the hepatopulmonary syndrome. Portopulmonary hypertension. It's portopulmonary hypertension is actually uh, the in pulmonary hypertension in the presence of any other etiology, uh, and the, along with the pulmonary hypertension, uh, a portal a hypertension of the cirrhosis of the liver. Actual pathophysiology is a limited blood flow in the pulmonary arterial uh, circulation and because of the vasoconstriction and then the endogenous vasoregular changes. And finally, it leads to the pulmonary hypertension. So hyponatremia, another consequence is the hyponatremia. So cirrhosis and splenic uh, vasodilatation and leads to the and arterial and feeling. It's called the salt and water rejection and then activation of the vasoconstriction and antidiuretic factors, salt and water retention and equaporate expression is increased. Finally, dilutional hyponatremia. So hyponatremia is one of the poor prognosis in the cirrhosis of the liver. So hepatorenal uh, syndrome. 
So in hospitalized patients in the cirrhosis of labor, they have the, the high incidence of the hepatorenal syndrome, acute kidney injury, and the hepatorenal syndrome, it uh, accounts for the one fourth to the nearly half of the patient in hospitalized patient. It is a, we call the functional renal failure because this is a reversible renal injury. And then if in uh, the liver disease is be treated in time, if not, uh, the progression of the hepatorenal syndrome, it causes chronic kidney disease. And in this situation, there is a poor prognosis because the 30-day mortality is a significant. And then the etiology is there actually because of the renal hypoperfusion. Uh, because the basic principle is that this uh, cirrhosis, hepatic pressure, uh, the resistance, and uh, finally vascular changes, splenic vasodilatation, arterial and the feeling is that the uh, the splenic uh, vasodilatation, organ hypoperfusion, these are the culprit factors of the pathogenesis of the decomposition and leads to the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. So um, it pathogenesis uh, renal hypoperfusion is called a hepatorenal syndrome. Uh, There's an increase in the hospitalized patient. There is a, even in the outpatient that increased serum creatinine by the 0 0.3 milligram per deciliters within a 48 hour. You have to think about the acute kidney injury or whether there is a hepatorenal syndrome. And then we have to, you have to rule out the, the other causes of the acute kidney injury, such as a, um, the other nephrotoxics and then uh, massive diuretics. So here is the diagnosis of hepatorenal uh, syndrome, HRS, AKI. Uh, um, and then you have to nephrotoxic drugs and then no sign of the structural kidney injury like the proteinuria, the, the other causes, like the RBC cause, and then you have to exclude first. And then... Uh, Actually, previously we uh, classified as uh, HRS type 1 and type 2, but now it is replaced by the more physiologic HRS AKI, HRS CKD. So here you can see that the definition of the hepatorenal syndrome, AKI, AKD, and CKD based on the functional criteria and then the structural criteria. So management in the first, you rule out the other causes of acute kidney injury, the volume expansion by the albumin infusion. Because of the hypoperfusion, the splenic vasodilatation, you use the treatment is the vasoconstrictor like uh, taliprazin or triodide. And finally, if uh, the liver transplantation, unfortunately, sometimes the liver kidney transplant need in the same uh, situation. So another consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver complication, decomposition, and the complications of hep uh, hepatic encephalopathy. So uh, it is a brain dysfunction caused by the border system. Uh, there is a wide spe uh, spectrum of the presentation subclinical to, to the coma. And According to classification, they are based on the type types A, B, C because cirrhosis of liver is because of the shunt and the type C related. And then severity uh, based on, uh, we graded uh, as a uh, West um, Haven criteria and the time course and some are episodic, some are persistent and then um minimal HE, and then SEMS are covert, not apparent HE. We have to uh, the diagnose with the special test in the laboratory, HE laboratory, and then SEMS are overt. We can uh, do that clinically, and the like of uh, construction, apraxia, number, uh, connection test, like, and then the based on the, and the precipitating factors as spontaneous or precipitated. These are the classification of hepatic encephalopathy. So pathogenesis and the, uh, the actually the multifactorial and, and incomplete understood, but ammonia is a leading actor in the pathogenesis of the hepatic encephalopathy. So normal physiological condition, there is uh, the ammonia from the portal circulation to bring to the liver and then the in liver, the uh, ammonia converted to the urea and it went the liver. So normally, but um, in 
shan't appear. There is a um, the shan't between the portal and system circulation. The, the the gut flora, the ammonia, and through the portal to the systemic circulation. This is the one factor. Another factor is the the liver injury. They uh, uh, the probably eliminate the the ammonia in the liver so finally this accumulation of the ammonia in the system is circulation and then pass through the blood brain barrier and then into the astrocytes and the converted ammonia to the glutamine this glutamine and draw the water inside the cells and then the finally ast astrocyte swelling and causing the symptoms so management of the strategy of hepatic encephalopathy, it's mainly in the, the GI tract because so that's why non-absorbable disaccharide is the first line therapy and then a um the oral antibiotic and because of the minimally absorption, they stay longer in the GI tract and then the reduction in the uh, colonic uh, bacterial loading and then reduce the ammonia production as well as the endotoxemia. So in this uh, situation, we would like to find a uh, highlight is that because the patient is hepatic encephalopathy, patient isn't eating well. So that's why the, uh, the attending physician have to aware of the diet and calorie requirement because adequate calorie and the protein requirements is very important to in the, this stage. And then other, uh, the branching amino acids, they are beneficial. Uh, cirrhosis of the liver is uh, the, also the hyperdynamic stage because of the hyperdynamic circulation, increased cardiac output. And then um, the previous, I've mentioned the basic pathophysiology of the vasoconstriction, hepatic vasoconstriction, and peripheral vasodilatation, and splenic vasodilatation, activation of the vasoconstrictor system. And then the central hypovolemia, and the finally it leads to the cardiovascular dysfunction, the gradual development of the hyperdynamic syndrome. In this stage, a very close mimic of the septic state, and then the call as hepsis. And another consequences of the cirrhosis of liver is cirrhotic cardiomyopathy. So hyperdynamic syndrome in the cirrhosis and activated. The persistently activated compensatory mechanisms by doing RA, SNS, and the finally it's a tachycardia and increased cardiac output. But effective, uh, the first uh, mean arterial pressure is a reduction. So finally, it's got uh, the cardiac dysfunction and then cirrhotic cardiomyopathy and then the without evidence of the underlying structural cardiac disease. So uh, bacterial infection, as you all know, so the cirrhosis in um, of the liver is susceptible, patient, cirrhotic patient has susceptibility to uh, the bacterial infection, prone to get the infection. Mm, because I already mentioned about that, because of the immune dysfunction, immunological mechanisms are compromised, and then in the state of the cirrhosis associated with immune dysfunction. And then that along with the pumps, pathogen uh, associated molecular patterns, and then finally it leads to the the uh, the production of the uh, the it um, encourages the and uh, cytokines production, and finally its development of the sepsis. And then me in this condition, sometimes it's an increased bacteria uh, permeability, intestinal permeability, and bacterial overgrowth. And then, uh, in along with the border systemic shunting, the immune defect, these factors uh, contribute to the bacteria infection, particularly in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So, uh, SPB is very common, and then the if untreated, a very uh, the mortality is sky high. So, um, now what is the SPB? It is without the source of intra abdominal source of the infection, and then the prevalence is even an outpatient one point five to three point five percent, and ten percent in hospitalized patients. Uh, how to diagnose? This is based on the diagnostic paracentesis, um, and then the absolute neutrophy count of more than 250. It is a, a diagnosis of the SPB. So uh, I presented the, the 
uh, the cirrhosis, a uh, yeah, pathophysiology, and then the decomposite transition of the compensated to the decomposited, and there are many uh, organ pe and really conditioned and because of the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. So regarding the take home message, cirrhosis is a dynamic cause and it can transgender trans asymptomatic uh, compensated to the the progressive and the advanced decompensated stage. So this uh, transition, the vascular changes is a very crucial and bivocal role in the, the complication. Vascular changes is important and the portal hypertension is a primary driver of the decomposition and causing the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. And Prevention of the cirrhosis progression is more important than the complication and the treating the complication what happened. So uh, to prevent the cirrhosis progression, suppression of the etiological factors is very important. Treating that we have to uh, the find out the etiological agent and the treat the etiological factor so you can prevent the cirrhosis progression and the prevent the development of the complication. And uh the understanding of the, the pathophysiology and pathogenesis of the cirrhosis decomposition, the, um, we have to uh, target the key factor to prevent the consequences of the cirrhosis of the liver. So uh, to prevent the cirrhosis of the liver and don't wait for the symptoms, treat your liver health today. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Natural history and consequences of cirrhosis of liver. I am very happy to have you, Professor Dr. Natoa. I am very happy to see you back here. And so now we are seeing how the treatment of the cirrhosis of liver. I am very happy to have you, Professor Dr. Natoa. Lisa, I am very happy to have you. Thank Good evening, good evening. Uh, chair persons, um, all of my teachers and my colleagues, I'm going to present the treatment of the liver cirrhosis. Basically, it is impossible to cover the every aspects on the treatment of the liver cirrhosis. And so I'm trying my best to highlight these some important points. So on the general management that so we have for major goals, the, what are the major goals? The first is the slowing or reversing the progressions of the liver disease. Previously, the mentions by the Mamadou Danantone. And then second is the preventing the superimposed in, insult to the liver. And the third is identifying the medications that require the dose adjustments and the many medications needs to make the dose adjustments and the symptoms should be avoided entirely. So every attending physicians and the doctors should address the symptoms a patient suffer and then should address the laboratory abnormalities. So preventing and unifying and treating the complication is the major component and then it's a very common challenges and when we are uh, challenges of we every everyday practice in our everyday practice, so we encounter these challenges to make the uh, manage the complication of the cirrhosis. The last is determining the appropriateness and the optimal timings. We need to consider the optimal timing of the liver transplantation in the uh, management of the end stage liver disease. The first slowing or reversing the progressions of the liver disease. So it is impossible to know the exact point at which the, it begins irreversible in patients with the significant uh, liver fibrosis. 
So some chronic liver disease responds to the treatment, even when the liver disease has progressed to the cirrhosis. So we, uh, when it is possible, we uh, should try and, um, to address the underlying etiology. So the, if we give the specific therapies against the underlying causes of the liver cirrhosis, and then some uh, some patients uh, in some patients, so we can prevent the further progressions. Here's a, a good examples of the uh, these strategies. And for example, uh, the management of the uh, treatment of the hepatitis C patient with the advanced fibrosis. See, in terms of the liver related mortality in patients with the uh, patient with the SVR is quite. Uh, difference from the patients without SVR. So another common and good example is the two-day abstinence from the alcohol in the patients alcohol-related liver cirrhosis. The third is uh, non salative beta blockers. When we uh, when we use the non salative beta blockers appropriately, we can prevent the further decompensations in the patient with compensated cirrhosis. The second strategy is preventing superimposed insults to the liver. So we can use the vaccinations against the hepatitis A, hepatitis B, whenever it is appropriate. And then we should also try the GL, uh, GLE uh, influenza vaccinations to prevent the further progressions of the liver cirrhosis. So uh, we advise, we should advise to avoid the Hepatotoxins like the alcohol, hepatotoxic drugs prescribed, as well as the over counter and the certain harbor remedies to prevent the further progressions. Then we also need the um, medication adjustments because uh, some uh, medications uh, need the dose adjustment and some should avoid entirely. And then uh, we should manage the symptoms and the laboratory abnormalities. As we all know, the muscle cramps is a very common symptom in the patients with the chronic liver disease. If uh, we fail to improve the uh, improved the symptoms by non-pharmacologic -pharm means. We should add branched amino acids, taurine, zinc, and magnesium to make all uh, to make it improve the muscle cramps. So, how about the umbilical hernias? It is quite common in the uh, quite common consequence in the patients with the large ascites. If patients is limited, uh, we should manage conservatively. So we can do the surgical corrections of the hernia performed at the time of the liver transplantation. Another thing is the hyponatremia. It's a very common, com uh, common problem and patients with the advanced cirrhosis. So every physician, every doctor, attending doctors should manage the hyponatremia effectively. So another thing is the thrombocytopenia or elevated iron. Liver disease can lead to the hypocoagulable state as well as hypercoagulable state. The relative balance or imbalance of the these factors is not reflected in the conventional indices, conventional indices of the coagulation, such as the PTINR, APTT. So next strategy is the preventing complications. In daily practice, we have many challenges to make the uh, to make the to prevention and the cure of the management of the complication. These are the general measures. The first is a judicious diuresis. Second is avoiding the PPI to prevent the spontaneous bacteria peritonitis. We, sh uh, we should try to, to detect the early Early, to make the early detections and the treatment of the infection to prevent the spontaneous bacteria peritonitis and the, to prevent the hepatitis as well. So avoiding sedatives and the treating the hypokalemia and hyponatremia is very important to prevent hepatitis encephalopathy. 
violent and nephrotoxic agents and the aggressive tyresis to prevent the hepatorena syndrome. Some interventions like the unit catheters, magnetic ventilations, and central lines, we should use only when clearly indicated because secondary vertebral infection is very common in patients with cirrhosis because a patient have cirrhotic patients have a, uh, immune deficiency. So to prevent the various bleedings, as we all know, if patient has clinically significant body hypertension, we can use the beta blockers. We can use endoscopic mesh, uh, measures, tips, and the shed. So to, to prevent the mortality from the uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, to minimize the mortality, so we should uh, make the proper surveillance programs to detect the early hepatocellular carcinoma, and then can manage appropriate. To prevent the spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, the spontaneous bacterial peritonitis can reduce the final fault to tarrest the patients. Early recognitions and aggressive treatments of the localized infection. The PPI should only be used with the clear indications, and then we, sh uh, we can use the prophylactic antibiotics in the patients with moderate to large ascites. To prevent hepatic encephalopathy, we should evaluate patient carefully and regularly at each uh, follow-up. These are the best evidence of the hepatic encephalopathy in patients with cirrhosis. First, could include the drugs like the benzodiazepine, non benzodiazepine hypnotics, narcotics, and alcohol. Second groups include the things uh, which can increase the ammonia protection absorption and then increase entry into the brain, like the acetyl intake of the protein, GI bleeding, infection, electrolyte disturbance such as the hypokalemia, constipations, metabolic alkalosis. So the conditions of the dehydration that can precipitate patients uh, to the to develop the hep hepatic encephalopathy. So very common things like the vomiting, diarrhea, hemorrhage, diuretics, large monoparasynthesis, so some vascular occlusions like the hepatic vein thrombosis and body vein thrombosis. These settings, a uh, patient can complicate it uh, with the hepatic encephalopathy. To prevent body vein, uh, body vein thrombosis, which is uh, very common in the patient with cirrhosis, we should focus on optimizing the liver function, and we should focus on the reducing the water venous pressure. For the hepatorenal syndrome and the nephrotoxic agents, we should avoid like the aminoglycosides, and then and the vigorous diuresis should be avoided in the patients with cirrhosis. Cirrhosis-associated immune deficiency can lead to the uh, so many uh, infections. Uh, it can be disposed to the patients uh, with the bacterial infections. So patient also has higher risk for the other infections, such as a cryptococcal meningitis. So how about the secondary infection in patients with cirrhosis of the liver? hospital acquired secondary infections are common in these patients. So avoiding intervention and the procedure unless they are absolutely necessary. In the one studies um, about the, uh, the uh, including the 207 patients of the cirrhosis who were hospitalized, 24% developed the second infection during the hospitalizations, mainly in the respiratory infections, unitra infection, and the clostridium difficiles. So these have a uh, forty-eight percent of forty-eight percent of the mortality uh, who develop the second infection during admission, in contrast to the overall mortality of the thirty-nine percent. So higher mortality in the patients with the second infections 
during the hospitalization. So we think about the Jewish, uh, we think about the um, making some interventions unless they are absolutely required. The next is the treatment of the complication. We can use the beta blocker for the body hypertension and then the appropriate pain management. And then we can consider the uh, appropriate use of the PPI to prevent the uh, apagine and then to prevent as well as to treat the apagine infections and then some peptic ulcers. So sometimes uh, we can consider the use of the peptides in case of the hyponatremia. So the one strategy is a liver transplantation, as we all know. The, that is the definitive treatment of the patient with the decomensated cirrhosis. It is only definitive treatment for the end-stage liver disease. But uh, we still need to consider the eligibility of the liver transplantation by using the mouse or the chine or the other different scoring system. So we also need to consider the complication related to the cirrhosis, and then we also should consider whether the patient has the body hypertension or not. So we also need to consider the absolute contraindications of the liver transplantation, and then we, uh, the uh, like the uh, psychosocial effect is still important before uh, making the decision for the liver transplantation. So how about the prognosis of the uh, liver cirrhosis? The prognosis is highly valuable. It's influenced by a number of factors, including etiology, severity, the presence of the complications, and the comorbid diseases. So median survival of the patients with the compensated cirrhosis is more than 20 years. I mean compensated cirrhosis. Once a patient develops the decompensated cirrhosis, patient might develop the successive complications like the recurrent phase, hemorrhage, refractory ascites, hypotonia syndrome, spontaneous body hepatitis, and the hyperbilirinemias. These factors can lead further decompensation with much higher mortality rates. So this um, slide show um, the nature causes and the disease modifying strategy in case of the uh, liver cirrhosis. So let's test with the compensators, let's test with the compensator cirrhosis here, and then uh, the median survival about the nine to 12 years. Some patients can develop the first decompensation. Once a patient get uh, first decompensation, the median survivors begins at one to two year, which is, sorry, which is uh, about the um, the rate of the decompensation, rate of the decompensation is the five to seven percent per year. So some patients, fortunately, um, got the recommendation, but uh, the incidence of the recommendation is very rare, and the majority may develop further progress to the end-stage liver disease. And here, unless uh, we uh, patients undergo the liver transplantations, we will lose the patients. Here's the upper part of the uh, slide. Uh, we can see the some preservative factors. It's a quite important factors, infection, active metabolism, viral hepatitis, and the same drugs. These factors uh, can preserve the acute decompensation otherwise uh, acute and chronic liver failure. So the, in this stage, the patient can go straight, can develop straight to where the end-stage liver disease and the outcome to a very, um, very poor prognosis. The base of the slide show the five-year modality in the, diff in the different stages of the uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Here again, the um, we uh, the stages of the uh, the this slide show the stages of the liver disease. We start the uh, compensated cirrhosis, which is a symptomatic stage with no signs of the clinical decompensation and 
when you are mortality less than 5%. So after that, uh, patient have the stable decompensations. That means the non-progressive decompensation like the ascites and cephalopathy, no ACLF development, no readmissions to the hospital. Typically, no drugs within three months. That a patient have one-year mortality, 9.5%. After that, a patient might have the unstable decompensated cirrhosis. In this case, progressive decompensation, cytis, GI bleeding, no ACLF development, at least one-time hospitalizations, Typically, no deaths within three months, but one year mortality is quite one third of the patient. And then the pre ACLF. Typically, ACLF developed within the three months in the increased systemic inflammation. Patients, the previously, Mama then mentioned, has the uh, patient have the different aspects of the systemic inflammation. And one year mortality here, yeah. again, the more than Half of the patients. Next stage is uh, ACLF grade one. ACLF with one organ failure. So I know when to just get uh, detail about this subtypes. And then once a patient develops the ACLF grade one, the 28 modality is 22%. And the treatment modality, nearly half of the patients. For the ACLF grade two, ACLF with two organ failures, 28, 28 days mortality is 32% and three month mortality is uh, 52%, half of the patients. When if patient have a ACLS, a ACLF grade three, ACLF grade three, that means uh, ACLF with the three or more organ failures. The 28 day mortality is 76%. And treatment modality nearly eighty percent. So the defining the development of the uh, decompensation from the decompensated uh, stages, uh, I think uh, it is uh, it is the development of the clinically significant body hypertension. Previously, my mother says that this. Uh, at this uh, time point is a very important. And the, in this um, point, uh, patient prognosis is dramatically changed because of uh, the development of the serious complications. So the measurements of the habitat venous pressure gradients is the gold standard to diagnose the CSPH. CF CSPH defines as H habitat pressure, venous pressure gradients more than or equal to 10 millimeter mercury. But uh, the measurements of the HBBG is uh, invasive and very uh, limited uh, facility in the um, some centers. So we should think about the non-invasive tools for the clinically significant for the hypertension and the varices. So we can try to find out the CS sign or CSPH on the imaging for, for example, ultrasound CT MRI. So we can calculate the liver stiffness, spleen size to platelet ratio as a non invasive And the last is a liver stiffness measurements by the transient elastography. There is the recently, um, recent recommendation by the Vavino seven consensus is uh, beautifully uh, described uh, the rule out and the rule in for the CSPH. If patient has the liver stiffness less than 15 kilopascal plus the playlet count more than 150. So we can rule out the CSPH in the majority of the etiology. If patient develop the liver stiffness measurements more than 25 kilopascals, that is the best get up to rule, rule in the CSPH. There is an updated guideline, guideline not sorry, not guidelines. Uh, it's, there is an updated guidance statements from the ASLD 
on the risk stratifications and management of the body hypertension and the varices in the cirrhosis. CSVH is defined as HBBG equal to 10 millimeter or more. It is the same as the previous uh, guideline, same as the previous guideline. Use of non-selected beta blockers in patients with cirrhosis without CSBH is not recommended for the prevention of the decompensation. But in patients with decompensated cirrhosis with CSBH, the, we can use, we should use, it is recommended to, uh, to use the beta blocker, especially non-selected beta blocker to prevent the development of the further decompensation. So the capital law, is the preferred non-selected beta blocker. Among the patients with compensated uh, ACLD, Carbidol law allows a significant more pronounced decrease in the HBPG than the traditional non-selected beta blockers. If non-selected beta blockers are contraindicated in the same patient, especially patients with the asthma, patients with advanced heart blood, patients with the predict arrhythmias, we should make the uh, endoscopic measure, should be used in the best measure. So we should use in the beta blocker with the cautions in patients with the related contraindications. So we can do the endoscopy and the band ligations should be repeated every two to four weeks and the obliterations and the other endoscopy repeated uh, and then endoscopy repeated every, every six months and every 10 months to assess the reappearance of the paresis. Tips should not be used for the prevention of the decommunization of the cirrhosis or the primary prophylaxis of the paresis hemorrhage. So I would like to highlight the pain management because of the pain is a very very common complaints in our patients because cirrhotic uh, patients have the, so many uh, reasons uh, to get the uh, generalized ache and pains. And then sometimes uh, patients might have lost the malignancy associated pain. So analgesic agents must be carefully selected in the patient with cirrhosis because of the risk of the acurinia failure and germ bleeding and SAID are the contraindicated with the exceptions of the low-dose aspirins. When the patient have and the, the risk of the uh, CBD, if the patient CBD risk is outweigh the risk of the complications of the low-dose aspirins, uh, we should use the aspirins. Opiates should be used cautiously or avoided because they may precipitate or aggravate the the encephalopathy. Tremoroid is quite safe in the low doses. We can use the topical medications such as the lignogen patches. These are the generally safe. We can use acetaminophen to the dose of the two gram daily. Generally safe. Most of the uh, hepatologists assumed it is generally safe in the patient with the sources of the liver, but uh, we should use the, the lowest dose as possible as we can. How about the PPI? Indiscriminate use without appropriate indications should be avoided because the risk of the subsequent infections was increased. For these statins, HNG GOE retardis inhibitors can be safely studied and continue in patients with the liver cirrhosis. So, with this slide, so I would like to conclude my presentation. Once uh, we have the patient with the liver cirrhosis, we should think about the etiology factors, and then we should also think about the current complications as well as anticipated complications. That's why so we can manage preemptively and then we can manage effectively an early detection of the some complications of the patients. With the we can we should manage with the multifaceted approach, including hepatologists, gastroenterologists, general physician, endocrinologists, surgeons, orthopedists, and some um, physiotherapists. We should address underlying causes. Previously, as I mentioned, the some uh, important etiologies 
can be treatable and once we can manage properly the underlying cause and we can prevent the further progressions to the uh, serious consequence and then we can make some regressions of the fibrosis. Life and change is a very important and pivotal for the patients and the patients should educate it to get the well-balanced diet, to get the regular exercise and then to follow um, the, our instructions and then regular screening and surveillance programs and then the, the patients should educate uh, for the uh, proper uh, uses of the some medication. So everybody should manage and they should address the symptoms the patient suffer and then some laboratory abnormalities so as early as possible. So regular monitoring, for example, uh, ACC surveillance and the monitoring of the uh, port pressure, monitoring and management of the some complications and the regular monitoring of the early signs of the hepatic encephalopathy is very important. And the mission educations, empowering the patients with these some educations and then some knowledge and to make the patients got compliance and the uh, got compliance for the medication as well as the our follow-up program is very important. And the finally, uh, we think about the optimal timing and the eligibility of the liver transplantation as well as uh, indications and the contraindications. Thanks for your time. Treatment of cirrhosis of liver, Chang Pyo Chapi Bado, Professor Sia Unanito, Jesu Tu Ventishi Barishi, Selegi, Sisin Chao Ya, Dr. Miam Shema, Liver Fibrosis, Chang Pyo Chapi Baye, Liza Sapanja Barishi. Good evening, Chia Yi, uh, President of Chia Yi Foundation, Myanmar, all professors and my senior and group. I would like to continue to talk about the pathogenesis of liver fibrosis. Cut to the liver, short to the point, it is pure valley bomb. This is the contents of my presentation. Liver fibrosis is the dynamic, highly integrated molecular, cellular, and tissue process responsible for the driving the excessive accumulation of ECM extracellular matrix protein, including collagen, sustained bind, and heterogeneous population of hepatic myofibroblasts that occurs in most types of coronary liver disease. In other words, it is the natural wound healing process respond to the uh, coronary liver injuries. Fibrosis does not cause symptoms unless it progresses to the cirrhosis. Uh, coronary liver disease, uh, etiology, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, the coronary liver disease, NASCAR, and even coronary liver injury, persistent activation of the inflammatory response, progresses the fibrogenesis, finally, sources of liver and fibrocellular carcinoma. Uh, fibrosis is a reversible accumulation of extracellular matrix protein. Diga, uh, the minor injury related to the fibrosis, the reversible protein. Now, chronic persistent inflammation should be so, you know, uh, the regeneration of the liver may be your destruction of the normal architecture should be your organ construction loss of structure loss should be your uh, liver dysfunction should be your. This is the causes of the fibrosis and sources, pre-sinusoidal fibrosis, post-sinusoidal fibrosis, and parenchymal fibrosis, and then then alcohol ideology, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, autoimmune hepatitis, non-alcoholic student hepatitis as a common ideology for the coronary liver disease. The same type of the pathogenesis of liver fibrosis, Madiga, Mania, or Cafase, liver sanguine and UDA said, and hepatitis study said. Liver my own immune system, she did. Mina injury is the two machine, sanguine machine, nitrocular seri, Cafaseria, the clearance of the pathogens and apoptosis, and I'm not wishing to do the CD80 says, CD40 says, present will be your the clearance of 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 the clearance
ဟာဗရစ်တိုင်စတေကအဒီဗီရှင်မဖြစ်ဖြစ်ဖြစ်ပြီးဆိုပဲနော်ဒီဟာဗရစ်တိုင်စတေအဒီဗီရှင်မ
matrix metalloproteinase ne tissue inhibitor of the metalloproteinase for ma muti ba le hepatic fibrosis can be regarded as a result of the imbalance between the ec and synthesis and degradation the progression damage ko the protect lung damage so no the sub your chronic inflammatory subject me so no the fibrosis progression phit bi yo so se phit no nai do withdraw of the erogenous agent or condition or causation of injury lung me so no the apoptosis 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 se se ne the fibrosis regression phit nai ba di ka lo the fibrosis progression ne regression ga bebo ma mu di ye so microphys ko ma mu di ba le the fibrogenesis state ma so no pro fibrotic microphys state ne to fibrosis pack ko set twa bi yo the withdraw of the erogenous agent or condition phit twa bi so no microphys ga the phenotypic switch should be pro resolution microphase take on your progress fibrosis regression. Yeah, that's about the fibrosis take go gym as you know, stay one ma the pericellular collection deposit on your ma the border fibrosis is such a state do your resolution of beginning region fibrosis is salad with few sub the fibrosis is salad. I know I know why is not significant fibrosis should be presence of the numerous region and septal it should be your septal fibrosis it should have. I am a tabi jola bezo, you know, a van five was it should be your suicide, should not much about. Suicide is a series of progressive state, not a single state. The seed is categorized by the progressive increase in habitat, venous pressure gradient, decomposition, and matrix cross linking. It was associated with the shrinking nodule thickening septic, and enhanced risk of the decomposition. Special logic bezo, you know, the reduction in the functioning habitat should be your liver. Uh, this one seems to know that no observation of the blood flow leading to the increased water pressure and its communication if you know about this function of the level area by the story function this one seems to me degradation this one seems to me metabolic this one seems to me synthetic this one seems to me increased water pressure and even all its communication if you the the sids uh putting a very very united is about the answer but the hebrewina syndrome of the family syndrome that is a bit of a match about the from chronic fibrosis can you ma ACC pin like what? Di ka ro di para kind signal pa we yung understand. Now survival signal pa we understand. The fibrosis ka kasi nung ma pin like what? Di ka ro chronic inflammation state ma advanced fibrosis state ma genetic mutation state ma so no the fibrosis ka kasi nung ma formation pin like what? I would like to conclude. Fibrogenesis is the natural wound healing response of the liver to chronic liver injury. The activated hepatitis study set is the principal set involved in the fibrogenesis. Hepatic fibrosis can be regarded as a result of the imbalance between the EC and synthesis and degradation. Withdrawal of the ideological agent or condition can lead to fibrosis regression in early state, not in advanced state. The cases of the events thus established hepatic fibrosis is complex and is influenced by how different cell types in the liver interact in response to injury and elevation of hepatic studies is a central event. Uh, different disease visit by way can lead to the chronic inflammation and SSC activation and expression of myofibroblasts and leading to the fibrosis, cirrhosis, and hepatocellular carcinoma. Some questions remain and answer. Uh, one is that can we pharmacologically accelerate fibrosis resolution? Some antifibrotic agents are ongoing trial and, and on pipeline, but uh, currently there is no acceptable therapeutic strategy exists. Treatment of the primary cause of liver injury can allow complete resolution of fibrosis. Another one is that can a fibrotic liver completely regress to the normal liver? Although the isolated cases of complete fibrosis resolution have been reported, it is uh, considerable that some degrees of fibrosis cannot be removed. Resolution may be limited by easy and cost leaking and a failure of elevated hepatitis cells to anago apoptosis. There was a variable degree of fibrosis regression in cirrhosis, but not a reversal of cirrhosis. Another one is the death fibrosis reverse, similarly in all types of liver diseases. Uh, liver fibrosis progresses at different rates depending on the etiology of liver disease and is also influenced by an environmental factor and genetic factor. So uh, fibrosis regression is not uh, similarly in all types of liver diseases. These are the, my references. And thank you for your kind attention. Lebo Rose Jan Bacha Bidawa Dada Mio Shah Chizu to Vidin Shiva Mia. Salary nutrition in cirrhosis of liver with special emphasis in Sakubinia Chan Bucha Bibaya Tata on Lewa Lisa Zapanja Barakmia.
ก็อะไรจะเรียนสายเฉพาะเนี่ยเราเรียนว่าเสียเสียมาเราเรียนกันแล้วเนาะจนเราสายท็อปิกเราดิทริชชั่นโซลูชั่นเลเวลสเปเ
what are the contributors of Saku Pinan services for? The general protein energy malnutrition, she did, massive wasting, hexia, she did, now also the micronutrient deficiency, but not anemia or osteoporosis, so that's less she did, but no, the garage on a side is she did, but not side is she did, Ali Satadi, Damuri, that network, but no, the general general intake, but not anorexia, nausea, vomiting, or the taste, but not impact gastric expansion from side is an impact conscious level, but no, and also protein restriction and salt restriction, but the general general. They prone to get a malnutrition. You know? I've got physical protein energy metabolism and cirrhosis is a hypermetabolic hyper condition. You know? And all the protein and amino acid metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism and fat metabolism and all the other things. You know? Now, external effect that you know, infection is you know, now systemic inflammatory response is you know, beta blocker and also alcohol. But the you know, other sarcopenia malnutrition is prone to get a condition. You know? General Sacubinia or blue diagnosis low level, no, the basic anthropometry measure low low yarn, no, BMI, BMI, no, general build another OB, OB, Sacubini, obesity, so I'll see them, no, 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 BMI, call me male, the Sacubinia, I'm sure you'll tell me, or BMI, unaged the group. So, me, I'm second, Francisco Thomas, solution, eh, that general prefer Dimashi, red, I will let that general interpellum, Madri, Tahab, no, a counter general CT, no, a CT marginal. Three level marginal, say the mass in this good time at the Hada, a condom, shit, or no, the Amalu, CDR, no, you know, Sakubinia, a condom diagnosis, or another CT at the letter A3 for skeletal mass in deck, or no, the Magonic check out, especially sober lawyer. Amu ESD definition, or skeletal mass index is assessed by the CD image analysis recommended as the most consistent and reproducible method to quantify mass and mass in patient with cirrhosis. Yeah, this is the uh, ASAD algorithm for screening assessment and malnutrition and frailty and sarcopenia and cirrhosis. But the bedroom is low, I mean, so all patients with cirrhosis go to screen low, I mean, uh, and at the same time, I mean, frailty assessment, but not that is low, low, I mean, no. The body is low, low, I mean, the clinical question is here, physical examination, low, low, I mean, objective measure, low, low, I mean, no. The rajan road, low, low, I mean, she didn't, low, low, I mean, she didn't, you know. The drug recommend low, dark, and off ski performance, key in a low, low, I mean, Clinical fragility skin and low low yare, but not low low yare. Another question about the physical examination, but always don't want to mask the wasting, but no wasting as a temple, clavicle, shoulder, scapula, daria, so no three that are obvious wasting series. So no, that sacubinia, you know, damage all the yare, but no. Now walking aid is don't need lab, but no inability to stand up from chair independently, but no. That is a indicator of sacubinia. Another question about the underlying contributing factor, you know, that's no chilo yare, but no clinical ma. Side is in the lab, cephalopathy is in the lab, poor dentition, and discusia die is in the lab. And not for general objective in the lab, you know, you know, because CT scan on L3, you know, now liver frailty index to hand grip strand, you know, that's generally the hand dynamo in the lab, you know, you know, you know, clinical, you know, you know, you know, male score, child abuse score, testosterone level, you know, that's the time, you know, you know, this is the ALCD diagnosis to form two box for Diagnosis and malnutrition, frailty, and sarcopenia. So, what is the mechanism of sarcopenia and cirrhosis? You know, the skeletal mass is an anatomy, physiology, and the protein synthesis is a static set, protein breakdown. The protein synthesis is a solution, the insulin like growth factor, one palm, and the myostatic myostatic is an inhibitor for protein synthesis. The static cell is a static cell, the skeletal mass is a maximum, one of the important. Uh, the molecular part we want to my own study agent room account are protein synthesis will end up below the static mass static synthesis will go in the below the bottom now for a protein breakdown protein breakdown in the body such a ubiquitin protein part we in a lysosomal autophagy part we but are the other general scalar mass a will attain it don't go on I imagine a cirrhosis model they got major driving force got a money I want to but somebody doesn't have to tell everybody said money I don't know that Sakupinia malah ini je. Monia, monia ni apa? Fikir saja. Monia mana? Monia ni yang itu myostatin atau apa itu activate talor dia. Bukan myostatin yang dah isi ini beda protein synthesis. Kalau jangan malu, jadi myostatin yang dah myostatin yang activate talor dia tu protein synthesis kau nazi dia. Bukan myostatin yang bahan ni adalah jadi amto. Bukan itu amto ni itu apa itu ini beda talor dia. Bukan jangan malu amto ini beda ni. Tunggu nak apa jadi sakupinia yang lain. Bukan Rajinal, now another part we took our rajinal di ammonia, you know, ammonia, you know, liver, you know, you know, the major disposal, you know, skeletal mass is one of the major disposal organ for ammonia. Ammonia, you know, the ammonia, you know, ammonia, you know, 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 you
ปีซีอาร์นี่เราคือจะมีเนี่ยโมเนียลบอลเนี่ยคือจะมีเพียงตัวอะไรบ้างเนาะเราคือจะมีมีอะไรด้วยเราเราดาไบโอสเตติกของ
European guideline, the BC supplement with the leucine and rich amino acid supplement should be considered in patients with decompensated cirrhosis for an adequate nitro nitrogen intake is not achieved by oral diet. No? And now, aspirin guideline, the BCU, the domo per diet. No? But now, by the way, I could not try the ESD guideline, the standard bono no? diet, diet per diet. Now, the general clinical nutritionist data is going to do a data that takes from people's of your data through our pure data. I mean, perhaps you don't know that when I don't know, you'll get it. The slice team on the BCA rule, I see one. I'm going to know the slow system, diet time timings of the diet, but no, there are late evenings. That's what she got it. When I don't know, you'll get a metabolic profile, but no fasting take a general cirrhosis patient in about three days starvation and you get it. ก้าวหน้าเราจะเรียกอีฟนิ่งสเต็กบ่เนาะทุกแคลอรี่สเต็กเนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าตาหน้าไม้บ่เนาะคนไหนใช่ไหนมา
ตัวอย่างเลยบ่เนาะดังนั้นมันเราจะเราเอ่อโซลูชั่นเพชรนี่มาโซลูชั่นนิวไดรส์ซูอินเตอร์โซลูชั่นเลเวลเช็คลบพ
ตัวยาลาจาตอเสียอีโดมารออาลงแมเมงลานยันนี่เข้ามาရှင်อ่าญามารอเอ่อดีดิแกเซฮักแกอะไลอันฟูลเอเจนซีทีมกาบิสเน
in PCAA group, patient receive 16 week of uh, branching amino acid supplementations, uh, which is amino living oral. Uh, provided by Osuka Pharmaceutical uh, Thailand twice daily and amino living oral was an orange flavor powder and uh, patient were advised to dissolve five scoops in 180 ml of water and drink in the morning and between 7 and 9 p.m. Uh, each serving uh, include 50 gram uh, which can provide 210 kilocalorie contain 13.5 gram of proteins uh, and 32.4 grams of carbohydrate and 3.5 grams of fat. And in the con control group, no nutritional supplementation during the study period. So as a result, um, uh, it shows changes in the clinical and laboratory parameter from baseline to week eight and 16 within each group. As shown, there was a significant increase in the BMI and serum albumin at week 16 in the BCA group compared to the uh, uh, control group. So this is uh, also the comparison of changes in the clinical and laboratory parameter at baseline and week 16 between two groups uh, is uh, demonstrated uh, uh, compared with the control group. Uh, those who were randomized to BCA has a significant increase in serum albumin level. Uh, and uh, also the uh, liver uh, fraud index also see the improvement. And as a primary outcome of the present study, uh, the reversion of the fraud at week eight uh, in the BCA group uh, was 15.4% uh, compared to control group is 0%. At week 16, BCAA group was 36% and the control group is zero so that we can see the improvement uh, uh, from the group of uh, uh, BCAA group. Uh, the reversion rate is 36% compared to the control group. So at week 16, the BCAA group had a significant improvement in all domain of physical components score. So as a conclusion, uh, the main results of this uh, randomized control trial was at uh, a 16 week BCA supplementation was associated with an improvement of uh, uh, liver frailty index in frail uh, time period A and B serotic patients. And uh, BCA treatment results in a 36% uh, frailty reversion rate compared to 0% in the control group. Moreover, the administration of BCA also increased in the muscle mass, improved the physical component of quality of life in this patient. Diaga uh, Jaro, nutritional management of uh, serotic patients. Uh, this is a recommendation uh, according to the ESA uh, 2019. Uh, a daily energy requirement uh, is 35 to 40 kilocalorie per kilogram per day and also recommended frequent meal uh, five to six times. And late evening snack is also uh, snack is also most important. And also breakfast containing uh, some protein and PCA supplementation also considered in the decompensated cirrhosis and inadequate oral intake. And also encourage physical activity. So uh, here uh, from our Osuka Thai, we introduced the product of amino oral uh, uh, for the uh, as a, a medical uh, supplement for the chronic uh, hepatitis patients uh, with calorie distributions of twenty five uh, is to sixty is to fifteen, uh, which is protein uh, twenty five percent, carbohydrate sixty, and fat is fifteen percent with the BCAA forty five percent and Fisher ratio is thirty eight. So in terms of calorie, uh, per serving, uh, uh, can uh, provide two hundred and ten kilocalorie. So this is uh, how to uh, uh, prepare for the amino lipid oral. Uh, we per serving, we need to add five scoop, which is fifty gram, mix into the warm water, uh, hundred and eighty ml. Uh, that can provide uh, the six gram estimated six gram of BCAA. 
And this is an, another, uh, some of the clinical study that uh, we did for the amyloliban aura in the past. And 2023, this is the later clinical study. So uh, uh, for amyloliban aura, that's how CIO or Maro Along OPM be on my that remind of the enable no that the uh the amyloliban are so into an ideal solution with comprehensive safe therapy for no for chronic chronic uh 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 liver disease address so yeah uh hospitalized patient they address amyloliban injection five hundred ml she bare we are not a quarter or the operation they address or no so yeah amyloliban aura or no aura got of four hundred uh gram bare. The Haliko Ramai Lo Yen, the Yamaya presentation slide caro, the Lao Babe, alone a chain baby or dry out him in bay dare, a yasi dango, Jesu de Mareshe. Product presentation to Chadi Bado, DKSHMA, business manager, Mans and Nansai, who are Jesu to Beck and Shibarishi. Sala Yui, a Juani session, Chete to Chang Mulu, a professor CIE, Kuma Wine, CIE, Ujo Sutundu, and Yimbo, Nia Yubi by Liza Zapenza and Bari. Speaker Mia Pichari, a professor, a Dr. Dogomin Sui, Professor Dota Nato, a professor, Sana Nantone. เสียมีอําเชนเสียออนไลน์บาร์รูอ่ะเลยเสียมีบ่เอ่อเทนเงกะตออาพิมพ์บ่เนาะนิมารุดีซูมมาเมทาเรควอชชั่นแอนเซ
is not cirrhosis. The difference between cirrhosis and the fibrosis, Dr. Mayhamshan has mentioned. Uh, Dr. Alain Bar, um, we talk about the sarcopenia and the nutrition and the liver disease. Our GI and Liver Foundation member in 2017, we had a, a meeting in the Bake, which is quite close to the Nain down, China, the time border, quite near time border. We have our guideline, developed the guideline for the treatment of the liver cirrhosis. And at that time, what he has mentioned, repeatedly mentioned, accelerated starvation, fasting. That we cannot allow in cirrhosis of the liver. Therefore, fasting for a normal person, maybe this accelerated uh, fasting for a cirrhotic patient. Therefore, late evening snack. And he has also activities. Activities, uh, not just walking is not enough, I fully agree. But at the same time, it is very difficult and uh, impractical for a person to go to the gym and do everything. Uh, the best I can advise is a swimming. Swimming has uh, all the points you have mentioned uh, against uh, resistance. And uh, uh, and uh, you have exhumed oxy oxygen and all the muscles in the body are involved. So I would suggest swimming. So again, I have to thank Osukar and the uh, distinguished from Thailand personally come and uh, engage in this public study. As far as I remember, you are the, I haven't seen anybody from the headquarters or from Thailand or outside Myanmar uh, supervising the Osuka activities or participating in Osuka for the last four or five years. I haven't seen any. So you are the one of, you should be proud of that you are the first um, people from Ozuka headquarters to get involved in this activity. And uh, thank you very much uh, for this. We are very much uh, motivated people from here as well as from Mandalay. With this, I would like to uh, conclude my wrap up of the today's presentation. And Prof. Satyo Sudhun, president of the Mimaji and Liver Foundation, will proceed and manage in the Q&As from the uh, Zoom meeting. Prof. Satyo Sudhun, please. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, because of the interest of time, uh, I will be answering a few short answers to the questions. The first question I would like to answer is from Dr. Wei Shui Te. He said, in the case of severe alcoholic hepatitis overlapping with alco alcoholic COL, in the alcoholic hepatitis model, yes, there can be overlapping with underlying COL, Shichin Shima, Shichin Shifu, but we call it an alcoholic hepatitis. <clears throat> Severe alcoholic hepatitis, you know, DF is more than 32, and the mortality is very high. <clears throat> more than 50% one month mortality. HMI, how about steroid role to a made in anemia? There are two scenarios steroid below anemia, GM bleeding, lepo, yang, and I know steroid don't them, don't them. I'm kind of this is a life saving condition, Peter, to a steroid. Indication as she and it is better than pentoxy five in a study similar to it. Either anemia or treatal bar, she got anemia or treatal steroid got a life saving line. It is indicated in severe alcoholic hepatitis, not by an infection. And a severe alcoholic hepatitis by the neutrophilia WPC or leukocytosis got a sheet, and then use antibiotics. And then because of that infection, uh, if we have to hold steroids, then the mortality rate will be uh, very much uh, we, 
you have to consider it. That uh, just leave it to the hepatologist. Not to quarrel, General, the cool way, made her. First question, I would like to know briefly about the post operative management of PTS as a post traumatic stress now, with the compensated liver cirrhosis who went to undergo major non cardiac surgery. And I'm an emergency and elective. And I'm a young people of cat. When people get a car and then oh, Sarema, could he pure the Temale, no, the other Pamadawu? I think. General MGLF ka cirrhosis kaitan booklet tema ada di bawah deh, pada di baju lagi baru jenop jauh biasa. Next question from Kolwenga regarding the cirrhosis etiology, myeloproliferative disease may lead to venous occlusive leading to COL. In such case, anticoagulation is is part of part of management in addition to the treatment of underlying etiology. Please mention briefly anticoagulation managed in such patients. Ada, yes. Now that is a million dollar question, Mabe. Now this is a problem. The balance between uh, the thrombosis and bleeding. Ada si oyele problem. Mepje pare. Ani to tanda tu. Dali briefly pe 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 Actually, uh, cirrhosis management, and we have to find out the etiology and the treat etiology. So, in this situation, the, the thrombosis and is a uh, etiology for causing the, the cirrhosis. Uh, we have to find it is acute or chronic. The acute stage we find within the six months, and then we consider the the uh, anticoagulated uh, therapy but uh, we have to be careful and the bit patient it's a decompensated stage various ionis is still uh, already long and then and some indication there are the in pro-coagulated stage and anticoagulated stage is the alteration so uh, we in actually clinical practice we will uh, we have a some cases and we discuss with the hematologist and then uh, we um, give the anticoagulation to uh, in the acute thrombosis but chronic thrombosis uh, cases we won't uh, give uh, anticoagulation thank you another question i don't know who is interesting Steatotic liver, steatotic, steatotic liver disease, she need a client die. Disease progression, tabu at lifestyle modification, appear below medication, do a below chemio matona in bandele kamia. And the online board will be the most eligible person. Okay, say I change the market. But you know, the by definition, you have a SLD, but you know, the general diagnosis of. Exclusion or definitely, you know, but you diabetic machine or bomb, she or bomb, you know, exclusion and do I mean, she don't have a job, never do the matter. But as I said, you know, don't hold over, it's a diagnosis of inclusion. But you know, this will be the media she may try this work about the young other job, a diabetic or be diabetic period. I don't never do my job, you know, treatment, a baby, I'm sure, a lifetime modification machine. So as I said, you don't like that come up by definition, you know. Diabetic or trilo dale, that's not as a deal, trilo dale, the media one. This epidemia or trilo dale, that's not as a deal, treatment be that a regional tamade, tamanda jamu da general, a lifetime modification, be your hypertension management of the obesity management of the dari gomala, general, steroid liver disease, good treatment of the aloe, general, tongo yama. Thank you, Ashia. So the last question is. The anonymous attendee is called me Tarawa. With our symposium principal, General Konanam mentioned Melobu or rank management in Lopane, anonymous zero, General Pili Mishivahu, and then the together together meet her and me go and I can order on the presentation of my clearly Sir or Nanetua State of Tarapita General Machiro Bahu. So this is the end of the QA section.
Oh, thank you very much, Professor Chosuran, for taking care of the Q&A session. Uh, I think at this point of time, everybody will be more interested in the uh, rather than the, our talk. Anyway, I would like to say again, again that today's CME program is very successful. The Osuka is very, should be proud of this symposium and encourage um, to support the future CME program. But one very important question I would like to ask also, where is uh, the, he, because she doesn't want to answer my question, he disappeared, purposely going to the toilet, not. The thing is that we are developing the guidelines, like a ACC guideline by the Roche. Uh, we have a fatty liver guideline, a hepatitis B guideline, C guideline by the myelin. So we are we have to update our new uh, cirrhosis of the liver guideline. The guideline development is the uh, first. We have a meeting of only uh, the liver specialists. Selected person will pre present the draft guideline, theoretical background. Then the se uh, a month later, second meeting. Then the third month is a rather raw and uh, modified. And at that time, we invite GI, GI and liver people. And the fourth finalized, the fifth, usually attended by the GI and liver plus general physicians plus general practitioner, and we developed a guideline. Previous uh, cirrhosis guideline was Osuka, Livega. Livega to Lamadu. Live by with Livega. So how about this, uh, this time? the nutrition, no, no, not necessary to answer straight away, but to keep in the mind of the Osuka, whether Osuka would like to support the development of the nutritional guideline, that you can later uh, reply to our uh, the president. Thank you very much. I think uh, we, we should stop I would like to hand over the floor back to the master of ceremony. We conclude our academic session. Thank you very much. Okay, sir.